Welcome back to College Algebra. In this video, we are going to be talking about absolute values and how to find the distance between points or two numbers. So, by the end of the video, you should be able to complete these exercises. I encourage you to come back and leave your answers in the comments below, and a solution video will be posted about 24 hours after this video is released. So, you can come back to these at the end of the video, but for now, let's jump right into it. The absolute value of a number a and we write this with a with two bars beside it, symbolize absolute value. Uh, this just means that we're looking for the distance from a zero on the number line. So this is about how far away it is. So for instance, we take the absolute value of negative five, we're asking how many units away is it from zero? So this is five units away from zero. So the absolute value of negative five is just five. If we look at the absolute value of 2.5, we're asking how many units away from zero is 2.5? And well, this happens to be 2.5 units away. So the absolute value of 2.5 is equal to 2.5. Now, distance, because this is distance, we're not talking about positives or negatives. If you were to fly from Vancouver to Toronto across Canada, it's going to be the same distance as flying from Toronto to Vancouver. So no matter which way you go, it is the same amount of distance in kilometers or in miles. So when we do absolute values, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of this uh, negative and positive ordering. We're just trying to talk about the relative distance between two points. So there's some nice properties of this that we'll look at but I want to show you the formal definition for it. Because this is a uh, sort of like a, what is it called, a, a, a wise function, which means that there are different conditions on what the value is. So we can say that the absolute value of x, where x is a number, is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. So this just means that if you have a positive number like uh, 10, the absolute value of 10 is just going to be 10 itself. If you take the absolute value of 0, it's just going to be 0 itself. But if x is less than 0, so if we have something like negative 7, then what we do is we take that number and we output the negative as the absolute value. So if we have the absolute value of negative 7, we're going to get negative negative 7, which is just the same thing as positive 7. In other words, this definition always gives us a positive outcome. So I have one example here definition. I say the negative, or say the absolute value of negative 27 is equal 27. Now why? So if we look at the definition here, we know that negative 27 is less than zero. Okay, which means that we need to use this definition on the bottom. So since negative 27 is less than zero, the absolute value of negative 27 is going to be negative negative 27. We're taking negative x here. And then the two negatives cancel out, and we're just left with 27 as our solution. So this is the formal way to use the definition. Usually in a college algebra course, it's really fine just to output the positive value and not worry too much about this definition. But later in mathematics, if you go into more extreme math, like real analysis or uh, complex variables, things like that, like, this definition is very handy to know, especially for proofs. Don't worry about that too much yet, just keep it in mind. So there's some interesting properties of absolute values, and these are good to keep in mind, and we won't prove these for later courses, but we'll show some examples. And these can just help make uh, computation problems a lot, a lot simpler. So the first property is that the absolute value of a is always greater or equal to zero. So this just means that the absolute value is always positive. This is the one thing you should never, never forget. So whether you take the absolute value of 16, which is 16, or the absolute value of negative 16, which is 16, find is that all of these numbers are going to be greater or equal to zero. The smallest number that you can output is zero, and that's by taking the absolute value of zero. We also know that if we have the absolute value of a negative number a, it's going to be the same thing as the absolute value of the positive number. And this is where 
a number line drawing works really well. So if we have zero here and we have the same number a, that's both positive and negative. So a and negative a, these both have the exact same distance away from zero. So the absolute value is going to be the same for each of them. Okay, so those ones are more, I would say intuitive based on just how number lines work visually, how the absolute value definition works. The next two are things that you can forget a little bit more easily. So if we have to take the absolute value and multiply them together, so absolute value of A multiplied by the absolute value of B, this is just the same thing as the absolute value of A times B. So you can just do the absolute value calculation once at the end. So if I want to take negative two, and multiply that by the absolute value of three. Well, okay, there's two ways. So the first way would be to just keep it separate. So this would be the same thing as two times three, which is just equal to six. Alternatively, I could just take the absolute value of negative two times three all at once. And then I get the absolute value of negative six, which outputs itself as just six. So either way, no matter how you do this, you're going to get the same result. So just pick whichever one's easier. But this, this works the same way for division, if we have one more restriction with it. And that is that b cannot be zero. That's because you cannot divide a number by zero. So uh, if we take, for instance, uh, let's take a very similar one. So let's take two divided by the absolute value of negative four. Okay. So if we do this separately, we're going to get 2 divided by 4, which is equal to 0.5. Or what we could do is we could take the absolute value of 2 over negative 4, and this would give us the absolute value of negative 0.5, which would just give us 0.5 out of it. So regardless of whatever method you use here, you're going to get the same result no matter which numbers you use in the real number system. Okay. So those are some properties. Uh, there are a couple more properties that you would find in future courses that we're not going to talk about now. But if you do want those to be talked about, so uh, the triangle inequality, we can talk about that in a future video. But what I want to do instead is I want to focus on the distance between two points. So the absolute value gives us the distance from a point A to zero. But we can also use the absolute value to determine how far away two real numbers are from each other. So if we have two numbers a and b, then the distance between them is just the absolute value of a minus b. So it's really just subtracting the two, except then we take the positive value because we're looking for the distance. So let's show this with two examples here. I want to find the difference between 37 and 12. So uh, I have 37 over here, I have 12 somewhere over here. And I want to find how much base or how many numbers or what's the distance between these two points. So to do this, what I could do is I can take the absolute value of one number, divide, one number subtracted from the other. And because it's the absolute value, the order doesn't actually matter. So I can do the absolute value of 37 minus 12, and that just gets me 25. So 37 minus 12 is 25, and the absolute value of 25 is 25. So that's a normal distance. Intuitively, we know that. We know how to subtract. But we can do it the other way as well. We can do the absolute value of 12 minus 37, and that gives us the absolute value of negative 25, and that just lets us output 25. So regardless of which one we subtract first, we get the same result. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. Let's do another one with negative 4 and 19. So here we have different signs. So maybe this one is less intuitive, I don't know. Let's say there's negative 4 and there's 19. Put 0 right about there. Okay, so now we're looking for the distance between negative 4 and 19. So we can do this in two ways. We could do the absolute value of negative 4 minus 19, or we could do the absolute value of 19 minus negative 4. So if we do negative 4 minus 19, we're going to get the absolute value of negative 23, which gives us a distance of 23. Or if we do 19 minus negative 4, 
we're going to get 19 plus 4, which is the absolute value of 23, which gives us an output of 23. So regardless of which one we subtract first or not, we're getting the same result. We're getting the same distance. And that's because, again, distance flying from one state to another. There's no negatives or positives here. It's just about how far you've traveled. Okay. So that is pretty much it for this video. So let's finish up with a couple questions. And as always, you can try to beat me to the solutions here. First one I want to do is I want to evaluate the absolute value of 17 times the absolute value of negative 6. And then I want to add 12. I'll put parentheses there just so we know which operation we're doing first. Okay. And remember, with absolute values, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, especially when you're multiplying two together. We could the absolute value separately, or we can take it together first. So let's, let's use one of our properties here. So this is going to be the absolute value of 17 times negative 6. And then I'm going to add 12. OK, so 17 times negative 6. Uh, that is going to be uh, negative 42 plus negative 60. So that's negative 112. And we want the absolute value of that. And then we're going to add 12. OK, well, the absolute value of negative 102 is just going to be 102. And then we're going to add 12 to it. And then that gets us a final solution of 114. Now, it is also perfectly fine to do 17 times 6 just by taking the absolute values immediately and then adding 12. So 17 times 6, again, is going to get us 102. And then we add 12, and that gives us 114. Regardless of which way you do it, you're going to get the same result. Okay, next question. Find the distance between 12 over 4 and negative 13 times negative 2. So I haven't just given you two numbers here, I've given you two expressions. Okay, so 12 over 4. I'm not going to change these, I'm just going to keep these exactly how they are and use the definition. So it's the absolute value of one number minus the other. It doesn't matter the order. So we're going to do the absolute value of 12 over 4 minus, and then we have negative 13 times negative 2. OK, so let's just calculate this. 12 over 4 is the same thing as 3. And we're going to subtract our next one. So negative 13 times negative 2 is going to give us positive 26. 13 times 2 is 26, and two negatives cancel, so we get positive 26. So now we have the absolute value of 3 minus 26, and that gives us the absolute value of negative 23, which gives us a final solution of 23. So the distance between 12 fourths and negative 13 times negative 2 is 23. And we could have just translated this into stuff we already know. So what's the distance between 3 and 26? And then, oh, OK, yeah, the distance is 23. That is much more clear if we reduce these first, or if we just look at this from a more intuitive standpoint. But either way, those are the questions. So at this point, you should be able to solve these questions. No problem. The solution video will be posted in 24 hours, so leave your comments down below with the correct answers. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them down below, and I will do my best to answer them.